All right, well, let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Food Allergy Canada's Allergy Pals Monthly. My name's Kyle, and I am so excited to welcome you to this month's session. If you weren't here last time or any of our monthly sessions before, here's how it works. We talk about a certain topic, and we have fun polls, interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. So start thinking of your questions now. And this month's theme, it's a hot one, managing food allergies in the summertime something i bet we're very excited about the summer and uh, dealing with food allergies it, there's a few special scenarios we're going to learn all about those tonight so yeah we're, we're going to be talking about a lot of things about summertime i look forward to hearing about what you're excited for this summer and there's going to be some stories some trivia going on some games the q a at the end so lots going on don't miss any of it. Oh, and also some polls too, which we're gonna do very, very soon. So a little bit about myself before we get uh, into summertime and allergies. So uh, I have food allergies myself. I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, egg, fish, shellfish, and actually mustard too. And my hobbies, I love playing guitar, ukulele, and volleyball, and playing hockey. My favorite summertime activity, I really love to play golf. I wish I was a lot better at it, but it's a fun sport. Um, and my most exciting summer plan coming up, which is every single summer, it's always the same. I love to go camping. So I am going to go to one of my favorite parks and rent a canoe and go into the great outdoors for a few days, have some uh, allergy-friendly s'mores and uh, enjoy the, the Canadian wilderness. So we got some questions coming up to, to learn more about what you're excited for this summer as well. So the topics today, summertime, geez, there's, there's a lot to talk about. And um, with nicer weather, there's definitely some different challenges that come into play. And camping, one of my favorite things, we'll be, we'll be talking about in more detail. Uh, keeping epinephrine cool, also different sports and hobbies and activities and managing allergies, how to deal with them at barbecues and different parties which happen very frequently throughout the summer and then dealing with insects too those pesky insects they can be even more pesky for people with food allergies and insect allergies and we'll be talking about different lotions and sprays and all of that stuff too so quite a mixed bag of topics but let's get into our first poll question and our first poll is out of the following, what is your favorite summertime activity? So you can choose the option that you most identify with here. What's your favorite? Camping? Are you like me? <laughs> Playing sports? Maybe it's soccer all summer long? Hanging out with friends? Just chilling? Or going to the beach? Swimming? Let's see the results. Oh, wow, look at that. It is camping in the lead. All right, we got some fellow campers out there. Also, quite a few just like hanging out with friends. And I, I love that too. And just going to the beach and swimming. Of course, these are all great summer plans. Hopefully you can get them all in during the same summer. Very, very cool. So let's do a little bit of true and false. So you've got your question box there. So you can answer these questions right there. The first question, the best place to put your epinephrine, and that's another word for epinephrine auto injector or the brand EpiPen. The best place to put that on a hot sunny day is directly under the sun. True or false? Right under the sun. <laughs> All right, number two, common allergens can be found in sunscreen. Is that true or false that you can find common allergens in sunscreen? And number three, whew, all soccer coaches in Canada have epinephrine with them at games and practices. So all coaches, all soccer coaches, they have it with them at games and practices. Is that true? Or is that false? C, 
see some guesses coming in there. That's great. Well, let's go over the answers here and see how you did. So let me get them all up here. The first one, the best place to put your epinephrine on a hot sunny day is directly under the sun. That is false. You do not want to have it right under the sun. It can actually lose its effectiveness with extreme temperatures. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this session, but you don't want it right under the sun. You want it in a nice cool room temperature spot. Number two, common allergens can be found in sunscreen and that's actually true and it's so important read the label every time and call if unsure there's definitely a few brands that have um, different allergens in them maybe for scent um, or as part of their overall ingredients and don't take a chance if you're not sure number three all soccer coaches in Canada have epinephrine with them at games and practices that is false. They're not mandated to, to have that with them. Uh, it is really up to you to remember to bring it with you. If you're at practice, if you're at a game, if you're at a summer hobby or activity, it's really important that you are responsible for it. You and your parents have a plan in place of where it's going to be. Let's do another poll question. I love the first one, but the second one, let's see. All right, this is for my majority here who like love camping. What is your favorite part of camping? Campfires, just hanging around the campfire. It's always fun at the end of the night. Swimming, jumping right in the lake. Maybe playing games or activities. I always bring a deck of cards with me. Or maybe just sleeping in a tent. That's when you can... Uh, Tell the ghost stories. It's just a cool experience. Maybe sleep under the stars, open up the fly. All right, let's see. How did everybody vote here? Oh, look at that. What a split. So a third of us love campfires. A third of us loves games and activities. And another third love other. And perhaps it's they don't like camping at all. But if you want to share what you love about camping, Feel free to put it in the Q&A box. We'd, I'd love to hear that of what it is that you are into with camping. So moving right along, I think we, that's a nice segue into talking about camping. And I'd say probably the most important thing, there we go. The most important thing about camping is packing smart. And when I do a, a camping trip, I am planning weeks in advance especially just on how i'm going to pack and thinking about how many epinephrine auto injectors i'm going to bring and that can really depend on how far i'm going into to, to the middle of nowhere uh, so i often have quite a few with me and really important is packing safe food and for me i usually take on uh, the responsibility of, of packing safe food for my trips but that's a really good thing to do with your parents um, just to get involved in the planning process of what food you'd feel safe with during your trip and uh, making sure that you don't have anything that you're not feeling good about with you in the middle of nowhere. Also important to check the sprays that you've got, bug spray and the suntan lotion. Those are really important to bring. Make sure that you have the right brands for you. And of course, a plan in case of an emergency. Are you going to a faraway place? What are you going to, what, what, what's the plan if something happened? Um, will you have cell phone reception there? So those type of things, you know, you never really want to think of the worst case scenario, but with camping, it's really important that you kind of plan for all scenarios because, yeah, a lot can happen when you're outside the comforts of home. But is it worth it? Absolutely. Camping can be a ton of fun. You just got to be prepared, plan accordingly. And a couple more little points here. Obviously, bringing more auto injectors than usual. And, and packing for safe snacks. Uh, trail mix is a really common thing with camping. And unfortunately, trail mix really has a wrap for involving common allergens like peanuts and nuts. And you can really make your own customized trail mix that's safe for you. There's no rules of trail mix. So you can get your own ingredients and make something that's really delicious and make you almost excited to take a break on the trail. Yeah. 
And for some of you, maybe you're going to day camp this summer, and that is a ton of fun as well. So with that, a few things to remember, and really the most important is that you're telling the camp about your food allergies. You're asking what foods are going to be served if they do serve food. Some, they just want you to bring your own brown bag lunch, but if they serve food, ask about it. And also ask if there's any activities involving food, any arts and crafts or other food-based projects. And when you're at camp, you should always have your auto injector with you and let others, especially your counselors, know where you keep it at all times. And if you're unsure about the food or not feeling comfortable, you can always bring your own safe food from home and hopefully they can help you find a place to, to keep that safe at camp. And obviously like school, when you're at camp in the summertime, you should still not be sharing food or accepting food from others. That is a very universal rule wherever you are. All right, let's get into another poll question here. Let's see. Ooh, the beach. And maybe you've been to the beach already. Maybe you got a trip planned up. Um, but here's a question for you. If you went to the beach, where's the best place to keep your epinephrine? Where's the best place? In the car? On top of your beach umbrella? <laughs> Good luck getting it up there. In your beach bag in the shade or leave it at home? And it looks like a hundred percent of you knew the right answer in your beach bag in the shade. Absolutely. Please don't put it on your beach umbrella and do not leave it in the car. Cars get really, really hot and you don't want to get your epinephrine overheated. And obviously you need it you need it with you by you. So leaving it at home is not a good idea. I was just at a beach this weekend. Oh my goodness, it was fantastic. And I actually found a place in the shade right on the beach where I had my bag and it was no problem at all. And you know, some beaches have uh, different bushes around or you bring a beach umbrella to keep shade. This was like a little cove, a little cave and it kept everything at a nice cool temperature. So very happy I found that spot. Awesome. Next up, let's talk about epinephrine in the summertime. So obviously we know you wanna keep it in a cool spot. You don't want it in the direct sunlight because that can cause extreme temperatures and it might not work as effectively if it ex gets exposed to that type of sunlight. So you don't want to do that. So you can consider having a special bag for it. There's different insulated carrying cases for, for epinephrine, you know, and just consider having a special bag where you know that's the bag that should never just be lying out in the sunshine. Um, it's really important you're not leaving it in a car, especially the glove compartment. You don't want to leave it out in any type of direct sunlight. So, you know, keeping it on you in a pocket, in your bag, in your purse, these are all great spots. Um, and also remembering, obviously, do not leave it at home. It's always got to be with you. So, you know, in the summertime, things are a little bit different. We're out of school. So you do have to have a plan and, um, and make sure that you're, you have that routine because it's a different routine all of a sudden. And you want to make sure that you're uh, you're staying safe. So find a good spot to keep it. Make sure it's staying at a good temperature, and you're off to the races this summer. All right, let's do another poll question. Let's see what will this one be. All right, excellent. Let's see what summer activity will you be participating in. I am really curious what you're all up to. So who's going to be doing soccer? And maybe you're doing all of these. So. Maybe pick the one you'll be doing the most of. So soccer, baseball, day camps, or lessons. Maybe it's a you know hmm, horse riding lesson or pottery lesson or language lessons. All right, let's see. Oh, and look at that. We got some baseball players out there. Some of you going to day camp, cool. And other 50%. What are you guys doing this whole summer? I'd love to know. Is it playing video games? Are you going to be playing instruments? Just kicking it with friends? Feel free to write in the question chat box there. Would love to see what everybody's up to this summer. Someone said tubing? Oh, that just sounds awesome. Yeah, I love that. And someone asked, does an epi need to be in a cooler box with ice? 
Well, that's something that you want to be careful with too, because on the other end of extreme temperatures, you don't want your epinephrine to get too cold. So you want to be very careful. It's, it's, it can be a good thing for it to be in a cooler container, um, but being uh, you know placed right next to ice, this could be a challenge as well. So it's kind of trying to find that sweet spot in between. Um, so yeah, and if you're looking for more info on that, I really advise you to go to Food Allergy Canada's website where they have more information on epinephrine, keeping it safe, and you can get a lot more technical details there. And epipen.com, epipen.ca, they have some info as, as well. Some of you I see are hanging out with friends. Oh, and hanging out with grandma. Oh my goodness, this just sounds great. I'm sure you're gonna get up to some pretty fun and special stuff together. So it sounds like you all have a great summer planned ahead, which is great. Let's move on now and we'll see what's next. Sports and activities. Excellent. We are just covering a lot of material tonight on so many things that you can do in the summertime. So having epinephrine with you, I know we've kind of said this repeatedly tonight, but it's so important and you all know that. It's really important to have it with you, but with sports and activities, you know, sometimes you don't have pockets. Sometimes you're very active. You don't have a place to put it. So it's important you have a plan where it's going to be, whether it's on your bench in the shade and you're telling your coach where you're keeping it. So your coach can help you in case you do need it. It's also really important to tell your teammates about your allergies and how they can help you. I'm a hockey player. I'm actually a goalie and I've, I, all my friends, they know where I keep my uh, my epinephrine when I'm playing hockey. I have it in a little bag on the side of the bench, and uh, most of them know how to use it too. And it's also important that you have your own water bottle. And why would that be important that you have your own water bottle? Well, mostly because you don't want other people to be sharing your water bottle, especially if they ate something that you're allergic to. You know, that could have cross contamination right there on your own water bottle. So really important that you are having your own water bottle. And also you are bringing your own safe snacks for energy. You know, there can be a lot of different snacks going on that are brought to the team and other parents just might not know about your allergies. Um, there, you might be new to the team. So important you just have your own safe snacks. For me, it's granola bars. For you, maybe it's something different, but uh, I always find granola bars give me a, a good boost whenever I'm playing a volleyball match in the summertime. All right, let's talk about parties and barbecues. It is definitely barbecue season. So really important, you're informing the host in advance, providing suggestions for safe food, considering bringing your own food to that barbecue. But also, this is probably the most important point, watch out for cross-contamination because on the grill, they might be cooking different things. For me, I'm allergic to fish and I'm always just cautious about salmon and different fish being cooked on the grill if I just want a hot dog. So there's other things that you can do, like cook it in tin foil uh, on a separate pan. So there's other things you can do to get around that. Uh, you also need to watch out for serving utensils that they're not double dipping, if you will, and going into um, two different things and contaminating different plates or dishes. All right, so let's get interactive here. And I would love to see if we can get some answers to this question of what would you do in a tough situation like this, where someone says at a barbecue, hey everyone, help yourself to all the food. There's no, there's no, sorry, you can't see that on my screen. There's no scoops for each dish. So just use your own spoon. Huh. Help yourself. There's no scoops for every dish. So you can just use your own spoon. Now, what do you think the problem is there? People would might not have washed it and there'd be cross contamination. Way to go. Absolutely. You know, if someone's using their own spoon for every single dish, it's probably cross contaminating each one where they're mixing those dishes and let's say one of those dishes has something you're allergic to, they use that spoon, they put it in the next dish, well, all of a sudden that next dish has traces of that thing that you're allergic to, so that's not safe. So how, how could we deal with this situation? 
Well, one, it's probably a really good idea to let the host know in advance about your food allergies. So they know, you know, what some of the proper procedures could be. You know, if they're serving something that you're allergic to, they know to keep it separate, to have a separate utensil with it. So, you know, you ideally don't want to be in a situation where you're dealing with that type of comment. You really want to get in front of that. So uh, hopefully cross-contamination is, is dealt with way before it's even a possibility. Absolutely. Okay, this is my favorite part of Allergy Pals. If you've been here before, you've probably seen the Allergy Wheel of Fortune. If you haven't, it's pretty simple. I'm slowly going to reveal the letters of a special phrase, and you can type your guesses in the question box. The first person to guess it wins. Are you ready? Get set. Go. All right. Summer advice is the category. Now let's see the letters. Starting with C. Any guesses so far? <laughs> Probably not. All right, we got some Y's in there. Can I buy a vowel in an A? All right, I'm just gonna slow it down, see if any guesses start to come in. If you think you know it, you can type it in the chat. Got an F. I would be just be taking a wild guess at this point. Hmm. We have some T's. I got nothing. Maybe you do. Okay, we have some more letters here. Any guesses yet? I have no idea what that second word could be. Oh. Oh, two O's. That might be a big helper. And I think we have our first guess coming in. Any other guesses? Oh, we got some really fast typers here. <laughs> so we have uh, quite a few of you now saying stay cool and stay safe. And you all got it with the very fastest fingers typing would be Fumi Sato Forest. Congratulations. And you all got it though very, very quickly. So I give you all a big summer high five. Way to go. So speaking of high fives and swatting in the air, let's talk about insects and insect stings. And Many people are allergic to insect stings, and it's that's a very tough one in the summertime because that's when they're always around and annoying and all over the place. And it's important you're expect, inspecting the area before playing, especially if you have an insect sting allergy. Uh, look for beehives and avoid garbage areas where they like to hang out. And clean up food waste after eating because they smell that good stuff, that sweet stuff. They want to come and buzz around. So clean up. Put it in the garbage and then stay away from the garbage. Look in your open can before drinking. Really good summer advice. Never know what could get in there when you're not looking. Wear shoes when you're outside, you know, barefoot. You never know what's in the grass out there. And zip your tent up tight if you're camping. If you just leave it open, it's open season. So important, zip it up. Pack bug spray, it works. Check the ingredients, make sure it's safe for you, and obviously always have your epinephrine with you. Especially for me, um, I'm not allergic to bugs, but I also still have it in my golf bag when I'm golfing out on the course because I do have snacks with me. Lotions and sprays, as we talked about in the true and false. So uh, suntan lotions can contain common allergens. Really important to read the label. Call the manufacturer if you're not sure. Stick to your safe brands. And sometimes bug spray, it can sometimes be made out of natural plant oils like citronella or soy bean, which soy can be a very common allergen. So even with bug spray, you have to be careful. Check those ingredients. Poll question. All right, let's see what's the next one. I think this might be our last one today. And what a great one it is. <laughs> Are you excited for summer? Two answers. 
yes or no. I'm more excited for school to start again in September. You're probably just wrapping up. But maybe you really, really can't wait for going into grade four or five or six or whatever you're going into. And you just want to skip summer. <laughs> I think I know how most of you are going to vote here. So let's confirm. Look at that. A hundred percent of you are looking forward to summer. You're probably thinking, Kyle, what? Of course I'm not excited for school to start. I'm barely finished already right now. So yes, very excited, aren't we all? And it looks like you're all doing some really, really fun stuff this summer. So very exciting indeed. So it is now time for questions. Anything that you would like to ask about summer? allergies, epinephrine, staying safe, you name it. What's my top camping tip? <laughs> you have time for asking questions now. And just some, some guidelines. Kids, this is just for you. Parents, if you have questions, feel free to get in touch with Food Allergy Canada directly. And uh, we have a hotline, we have email, and we can really address some of your, your deeper concerns with a lot of uh, facts and advice so feel free to get in touch um you can keep you can type in your question if you want to put your hand up you can ask a question over the phone try to keep it short and sweet we don't give medical advice i am certainly not a doctor but we do the best we can in providing helpful advice so that being said i'm going to check into nothing in the chat i don't see any hands up which is fine but I actually received a couple questions from the registration. So I'm gonna read those off and that gives you some time to think of any other questions. And we'll go from there. So one of the questions we got, what food should I bring camping? Well, let me tell you, I would say when you're camping, it is definitely not the best time to experiment with food since you're, you know, could be in the woods and farther away from, from getting medical care. I, I, I stick to safe foods. Um, and I also look at camping websites and cookbooks. There's some really cool ones out there of how to cook over a fire and do some really neat recipes. And I also think, you know, is there a recipe I can modify and substitute if I, there is something I can't eat? Um, but ultimately, you know, sometimes you just really need to buy the regular foods you already love. You just need to package them differently. So, you know, put them in smaller containers and um, have have different insulations for them to keep them cold. Um, and that's that's it. Just kind of being creative with things that you already know. All right. I see some questions from some of you, which is great. Um, Britt asks, why do I have an allergy? Good one, Britt. And, oh, I wish I had the answer to that question. That's, that's on, on, honestly the million dollar question. Why do we all have allergies? Why do I have allergies? Why do you have food allergies? And um, right now we don't know 100% why so many people have food allergies. And it's about six to 8% of the population of kids have an allergy. So you're definitely not alone. There's, uh, it's almost two in every classroom. So they are quite a common thing. And, Good news is researchers are doing some great work trying to find out more information about allergies, why we're getting them, why more and more people seem to be getting them. Uh, but right now, you know, obviously we have them and there's no cure uh, at this point. So that's why it's important that we're just educated like you guys are. You're learning, you're here at Allergy Pals, learning so much more to help keep yourself safe. So at this point in time, I give you a big thumbs up for doing all that, for taking, taking those strides to stay safe and keep up the great work i know some days it gets tough but um you know you can manage it and you don't have to let them slow you down especially in the summertime so i know you're doing a great job with that brip all right the next one is how many epi pens or epinephrine auto injectors should you bring to a day camp or a campground so you know all in, in most regular situations the, one of the advised uh, guidelines is always having two with you. Um, you know, and with a day camp, it's just up to your comfort level. 
uh, if you think having another one on hand would be helpful, one that's given to a counselor and then two on on your yourself, it's up to you. Um, but you know, two is a good general rule of uh, of how many you should have. And at a campground, you know, depending on how far you are from emergency help or help getting to you, that might dictate. So you might bring a couple, couple more if that makes you feel more comfortable. But um, you know campgrounds yeah it's it's you're you're farther away so it's a really good idea to you know have your base of two and then and then go from there maybe you have a few more i do some some backcountry camping where it's you know in a canoe and farther out so i uh, i definitely have quite a few more with me just almost for peace of mind um and then knowing i have a, a cell phone that will, should get reception in these places as well all right, the next question was, do, 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 do. oh, I find it hard to carry my epinephrine with me in the summertime, as I usually have it in my jacket pocket, and I don't wear a jacket in the summer. Where should I keep it in the hot summer months? Excellent question. Well, cargo shorts are a really great option. I love cargo shorts. You can throw it in those. Um, having just a dedicated summer bag, and that can be a fun thing to shop for. Um, a backpack, a waist pouch that also carries other essentials for a hot day, you know, a little mini water bottle, perhaps, and a little fan. Um, so get creative, but um, yeah, try to work it in with your, your style, your fashion, and your lifestyle in the summer to make sure it's just a good fit overall. For me, cargo shorts is usually a good fit or my backpack. I've always got a ton of stuff in there. All right, so I'll do, it looks like one more question. And it is, is it safe to get ice cream with food allergies? Great summer question. <laughs> Keep you cool with ice cream. Well, it depends on the place, right? You know, some places are very accommodating with food allergies. They'll, they'll have allergy friendly ice creams. Um, they'll have separate ice creams and scoops for those ice creams. So I'd say the most important thing is when you go into an ice cream parlor, you are informing them about your food allergies first and foremost, letting them know what you're allergic to, asking those smart questions. Um, and I find sometimes places that have that soft serve ice cream, those are some of the more basic ice creams. Uh, I have more success with those, but again, you never know. So you gotta ask all those questions, but that can be a good starting place. Well. That's it for questions. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit foodallergycanada.ca. You can use our contact form there. And there's also our phone number where we have people that are happy to help uh, any anytime, Monday to Monday to Friday, nine to five. So give us a shout. We're always happy to help. Next month's session. Hey, speaking of summertime, we're taking the summer off from Allergy Pals. <laughs> we do this all year long. We've got programs in September starting up where it's an eight week intensive Allergy Pal session where every week you're with a group. You can meet up with a mentor and a team of seven or eight other kids, get to know each other, make new friends. So you can all, you'll be able to sign up for that next week on our website. But the next monthly session, which is open for everybody, that's August 25th. And the topic's going to be the complete opposite of being free for the summer. It is going back to school. So hope you join us for that one. It'll be a really important one. Love to see you all there. And you can watch past Allergy Pals monthly webinars on our website and on YouTube as well. And special shout out and thanks to the University of Alberta and TD Securities for making Allergy Pals possible. So. Thank you so much to everybody for attending today. I hope you make it next time. And uh, lastly, please take a second to fill in the survey that pops up afterwards. We really appreciate your feedback. So until next time, stay cool out there and stay safe. Bye everybody.